What's going on, readers and listeners of Big Blue View? Nick Filato here to talk about Don Wink Martindale, the new New York Giants defensive coordinator taking over for Patrick Graham, who is now with the Las Vegas Raiders. And I liked Patrick Graham a lot, but I'm excited about this hire of Don Wink Martindale, somebody who is going to wreak havoc, somebody who's going to manipulate the opposing offense's protection plan. And I'm really looking forward to those simulated pressures and all the exotic looks that he has up front. Going to run a lot of man coverage on the back end. So let's dive into his film. He comes from that buddy Ryan Tree, so you know he's going to be aggressive. Here it is. The Ravens were a top six team in man coverage last year. They run a ton of cover one. That is a single high safety, which we're going to see right here. And this is a man coverage look right here. Even pre-snap is going to be that post-snap. There's going to be no rat in the hole, so no underneath defender. It's just going to be man across the board with one single high safety. And another thing Don Wink Martindale does excellently is scheme free rushers manipulating the protection pre-snap to allow a free unblocked rusher in at the quarterback post snap. That's exactly what happens on this play. We're going to have this single high safety right here, and then we're going to get man right here, man right here, and then man right here, and man right here. Here we'll run it from the sideline angle, and they'll break it down more in depth from the end zone angle. You see, great job by 25 working over the top of this cross. This is a third and six situation, by the way. It's a great job right there by 25 to avoid the pick. Gets over the top. Forces the throw to D.D. Westbrook. It's played excellently by Marlon Humphrey. Tries to go inside. It's a great play by Marlon Humphrey. A great call. Now watch what happens here. So this is pre-snap, right? So you have the line to the right. One, two, three, four potential rushers for the Baltimore Ravens from the nose technique over. And then you have three right here. Now we would imagine that he's going to be locked up on 17 and someone's going to lock up Tyler Conklin as well, but you can't be so sure. So these two linemen have to account for these three right here. I mean, if all three were to come, they'd be out schemed right there, but then Kirk Cousins could throw hot to either 17 Osborne or Tyler Conklin, 83 right here. But this is the problem. You have three against four. Never a good thing for an offense. And post-snap, the Vikings cannot get over to block the fourth man. You'll see that right here. Comes in free. Kirk Cousins feels it, throws it, puts it on target. But Marlon Humphrey is talented enough, quick enough, and good enough to knock it away from D.D. Westbrook. But this is just schemed up pressure right here. I mean, pre-snap from nose tackle over on the right side of the line of scrimmage, you have four guys. That's a three versus four. That's a numbers advantage for the defense. And they're able to take advantage, throw it right here. And we're going to see the same thing against the Indianapolis Colts right here. You see you have some players back here. Now we have two players right here. And then one, two, three, four, with 81 in this area. So if you wanted to break down the protection from these three, it could be three versus three if Jonathan Taylor stays in. Let's roll it. Gets him from the other side. And that's just deception right there because you're worried about this side, right? And you have receivers on this side, which you can't see on the screen right here, but they bring the blitz from this side. And what they do is Jonathan Taylor releases out on the route, but watch what 21 does. He sticks to him, and watch how 69 has to pay attention to him. He kicks out like he's going to block him, and then he says, oh, well, he's not there anymore. So he just kind of helps out 54 right here. And look, you have everyone accounted for, right? Not so much. Because you have this free rusher coming in right here, and 69 is not blocking anybody because he had to account for this individual. So he comes over from the blind side, and Carson Wentz doesn't feel it at all. This is just disguised well. And if you look at it, just before the snap, 99 sets up right over the top. Five technique, off the line of scrimmage a little bit, of 69. But 60, 54 right, or 64 right here, this guard has to account for that as well. So the center has to block out here, 54 has to block out here, and then he has to block out here to possibly take 21, who could be coming in on the blitz. He's not sure pre-snap. There's no way he can know. But what that does is create a one-on-one -on -one versus 62 in that individual, and then 79 in this individual, and then no one to account for a homeboy right here. And that's how you get an easy sack, my friends. Another easy way to create free rushers is to play cover zero. And cover zero means there is no safety on the back end. There's no safety help. So it's just man up, and then everybody else is coming on the blitz. And that's exactly what happens here against the Cincinnati Bengals aligned and empty. If you want to create free rushers against the empty formation, 
throw cover zero, but then you can get burned, which we'll see later on in the video. But let's roll this and see what happens. Basically, I have two free rushers. One's a little impeded. Marlon Humphrey comes away with the interception. We'll go through it one more time. He's trying to hit Jamar Chase on the seven route, the flag. A little smash concept in the red zone. Like it, but ends up being an interception. And now let's look. Let's check this out. So we have a wide nine rusher here in Justin Houston. We have a double mug look. We have two defenders right here in the A-gap. So how is Cincinnati going to block this up with one, two, three, four, five, six defenders and only one, two, three, four, five? five blockers. There's no running back here. There's no tight end. Joe Burrow has to get rid of the football here. And we see it. We see all this happen because this guard's going to have to block here. The tackle's going to have to block here. Center's going to have to take him. Guard here. And then he's going to have to kick out and take Justin Houston. Who's accounting for 54? Nobody. And that's why this happens. Burrow tries to fade away. Throws it up. Easy interception for Marlon Humphrey. Now, that's just scheming pressure right there. You love to see it. But that's also when you bring heavy heat, heavy pressure. And there are plays, man, in this coordinator's playbook where he doesn't necessarily have to bring heavy heat. He'll bring five. Sometimes he'll use stunts, which we'll see a little bit later. But one thing I did see, something that I love, is that Don Wink Martindale loves to attack the B-gap. And he does it in a creative manner. And we're going to see that right here. This is a screen pass. So you typically want to throw screen passes into blitzes to catch a bunch of defenders upfield and then spring a huge play with a bunch of blockers in space. But you got to get rid of the football really quickly. And I absolutely love how Don Wink Martindale brings this pressure. So what he's going to do is he's going to bring Justin Houston wide. That's going to force this tackle to kick in this direction. Then he's going to send right through the B gap. And then this DB right through the B gap. While he does that, he's going to coffee house this individual towards 75 before he breaks off into a zone coverage underneath. That's just going to occupy 75. And what that's going to do with the wide rush from Justin Houston right here, it's going to leave a wide open B gap to the left side of the line of scrimmage. The screen is going to the right to Kareem Hunt over here, but Baker Mayfield can never get the football off. You're going to see that right here. He's two guys right in his face. He tries to pump it, and he ends up fumbling the football. Ravens recover. You also have two pressure guys coming from this end, but you have three blockers on that end. So the Browns have an advantage over here. But this is where the pressure is coming from, this area. Love to see that, man. Two guys running unabated through the B-gap. Nobody to block them because this individual held the guard in place. And then number 50, Justin Houston, took a wide angle against this tackle. And that's how you create mistakes right there. And this is something I saw a lot in the film. And here's the sideline copy, just to see the other routes. You can see it was a design screen right here. You can see everybody kick out into space. If they were able to hit this, they were going to have some space here. Now, there's two blockers downfield, three Ravens defenders. But still, this could have been a huge play. Could have went for a touchdown, possibly. Here's another look where... The Baltimore Ravens attack the B-gap, and they scheme a two-verse-one against Benny Snell, who is in pass protection here, a six-man protection for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right before the snap, they're going to rotate this safety back down. He was initially accounted for by the protection, and then he rotates back at something else that you love to see from Don Wink Martindale. He rotates his safeties quite often. This safety is going to kind of bump over here to allow this individual to blitz. Let's watch from this angle. get the sack on Big Ben. And you can see, safety's not the only one to come. We also have this individual act as a creeper, come off the line of scrimmage, drop underneath these two in-breaking routes. Nothing for Ben Roethlisberger. Now watch it from the end zone copy. You see another double mug look right here. Two guys in the A-gap. Are they sugaring the A-gap? Are they going to both bail? What's going to exactly happen with these individuals here? Now, 38 is looking like he's about to blitz a little bit. He had the safety bailing right there. Now watch. 49 and 38 both get into that B-gap right there. And that's sprawling off of a number 50. Justin Houston wide angle right here to get the tackle to go in this direction. And also look at the 4-I right here. Calais Campbell is going to cross the face of number 51, which is the guard. And that is important because what is the guard going to do? He's not going to allow him to cross his face. He's going to block in this direction. And with this individual kicking out over here to take the wide rusher, what happens to the B-gap? 
Good luck, Benny Snell. That's what happens. 49 and 38 both get in there. Sack Ben Roethlisberger. You also love 49's path because initially he's in the A gap, right? The center has to account for him. Center also has to account for him too. Wow, the guard had to account for him and the tackle had to account for him. But who's coming? Who's dropping? This is how chaos, organized chaos, as Rex Ryan would say, is created. 49 opens up like he might drop back into coverage. Delayed blitz a little bit. Gets in there. Gets the sack. Get down Big Ben. Wink Martindale also employs stunts. He's not just purely about blitzing five, six, seven men, although he does love to do that. He also brings stunts, which we will see here as well against the Chicago Bears, where he's going to use this nose tackle to kind of act as the penetrator with Adafe Owe going around this way, Justin Houston going inside to kind of occupy both of the attentions of these two with 54 Tyus Bowser stretching up the pass rushing arc and eventually getting the sack. Let's roll it. Here we see. He gets to Andy Dalton, gets the sack. This is a four-man pressure, okay? We saw a lot of stunts with Patrick Graham. Loved it. You know, I think Leonard Williams and Dexter Lawrence as a looper and penetrator, respectively, was very successful with Patrick Graham, specifically in 2020. But you'd like to see this as well. Oa is way over here. He's essentially a five technique, and he comes all the way across the formation because he has that unique athletic ability to do that. The sack comes on the other side. I saw this several times throughout the throughout the film that I saw. And we'll see it here too with Calais Campbell acting as the penetrator with 96 kind of being the looper around an inside kind of double tackle stun. Oof. I mean, that's just punishable. Now this one's completed to the wide receiver right here, but you can see that he brings that up front. Matt Stafford double clutches, gets rid of the ball. Just one more time with Clayus Campbell, who is a free agent, by the way. That's just punishing, to be honest. Now it'll play against the Kansas City Chiefs that I appreciated. I mentioned it, I believe, earlier. And this is a play where, pre-snap, we have a two-high look from the Baltimore Ravens. And it is a three-by-one set with Travis Kelsey as that one lone receiver to the backside. It's something that Kansas City Chiefs run pretty extensively, to be honest. Creates a lot of mismatches because you have to pay attention to this backside lone receiver, who is a tight end. Also kind of gives you a run strength if you want to look at it that way, even though the running back is kind of offset to the other end. But that's neither here nor there. But watch what the Ravens did to kind of mitigate the effect of Travis Kelsey. Because by this point in the game, it's the third quarter. This is a close game. Travis Kelsey had already had a, it was a long touchdown catch that was basically just a quick pivot route where the Baltimore Ravens just collapsed on themselves and couldn't tackle the band. And that's probably one of the biggest downfalls other than the injuries to the Baltimore Ravens and their 2021 defense was the fact that they had wildly inefficient tackling. But watch the adjustment. And I love this adjustment because this is a quasi drop eight type of situation that the Kansas City Chiefs face against the Baltimore Ravens. But Adafe Owe right here is going to check at the line of scrimmage, he's going to check Travis Kelsey, and then he's going to come to the middle of the defense to kind of act as a spy on Patrick Mahomes. And this is something that the Cincinnati Bengals did pretty extensively in the second half of the AFC Championship game to contain Mahomes and slow him down. It's just going to be a three-man rush, and then Owa's going to come after he checks Travis Kelsey. Let's watch. Everybody's going to drop to deep zones right here. You got depth, depth, too high, depth, 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 past the sticks. And then depth paying attention to Robinson down here. And Owa gets in. Mahomes is reckless with the football and throws an interception. But let's watch Owa one more time. Because he's off the line of scrimmage. Checks Travis Kelsey. Forces him inside. Then he comes. Spies. Hits Mahomes. Throws the interception. It's a good adjustment right there. And I got done watching that game against the Kansas City Chiefs just before. And I got to tell you, man. The scheme was a lot different than what you would imagine from a Don Wink Martindale defense. Now, he brought the blitz a couple times. The Byron Pringle touchdown, five-man pressure package where Patrick Mahomes made him pay. But he was relatively tame for a Don Wink Martindale type of defense. 
And I like the fact that he had these adjustments. He dropped into deep zones. He didn't stunt once, I don't think, the entire game because he wanted his defenders to have defined rushing lanes, to not allow Patrick Mahomes to step up and extemporize like he does so excellently. They did not allow Tyreek Hill to beat them with their speed. They were playing some too high types of coverage, something they don't do all that often. They're a big cover one team. And I felt like their players also executed cover one when they ran cover one relatively well. So they stepped up. You know, they weren't perfect in that game, but Adafe Owe really came through with the forced fumble on Clyde Edwards-Alaire late in the game. But credit to Don Wink Martindale for adjusting from and deviating from what he typically does so often, which is blitz aggressiveness. Because when you do that against some of these top dogs, you're going to get burned. Back to the film. So like every coach, every philosophy, there are always going to be some cons to go along with the pros. There's a reason why the Ravens' defense was pretty bad this year, and that's mainly because Marlon Humphrey, Jimmy Smith, Marcus Peters, the top cornerbacks, the top coverage cornerbacks, the top guys on this defense, they were injured for the majority of the year. They were kind of in and out of the lineup. And we've heard Don Wink Martindale talk about the importance of coverage players to his defense. That's why I'm not going to be surprised the Giants really early in the draft pursue somebody who can cover on the back end of the defense more than likely some kind of man coverage type of cornerback we can dive into those prospects later but it's imperative to the philosophy that Don Wink Martindale runs on the defense and if you don't have those individuals you can get burned and another thing is even if you do have those individuals, you need them to win their one-on-one matchup. So here, the play has already happened, but you can see across the board, man, 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 rat in the hole, cover one, four-man pass rush, Joe Burrow. So what they're going to get here is you're going to get the safety who's going to slide in this direction here. Now, this is the two-man side right here, three-by-two set, empty, but you have Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, so the safety is going to be paying attention to that area. So that's going to really isolate these players in one-on-one. It's really going to be a problem, though, because this is Patrick Queen right here, an athletic linebacker, but one who has struggles in coverage. He's not overly adept in terms of covering defenders, despite his athletic capabilities but he's against Tyler Boyd and that is a tough matchup when you can see what happens here and like I said in order for this defense to work when you run man coverage you need to win your one-on-one matchups he does not here even though this is an incredibly tough cover you can see what happens this goes far just a little stick and nod route by Tyler Boyd and Patrick Queen was just left in the dust I mean Patrick Queen is an athletic linebacker he's not going to cover this individual and he struggles covering tight end sometimes because he's he's not fully along in his development quite yet but we're also going to see another type of mistake now this is a look there's no safety on the back end right here you have a pressure type of look from the ravens and the reception is going to go empty formation to cj ham the fullback who's just going to run a streak right here but watch what happens you have justin jefferson in the slot he's going to run a little out route You're going to have this cornerback right here who's going to try to play some sort of cut technique and trap Kirk Cousins, who this player thinks is going to throw the out route, bait him, and then take that pick six. But watch what happens instead. See, he has his eyes right here on this. He thinks it's going to go there. This is a fullback. I'm not going to pay attention to him. Good on Kirk Cousins for realizing that. And he finds him deep for that catch right there. Now, This isn't necessarily him winning a one-on-one matchup, but it's him getting a little bit greedy, a little bit aggressive, which I'm sure, you know, in a lot of situations, Wink Martindale wants that to happen. But he allows the other receiver to get right behind him and make that catch. I'm looking forward to Don Wink Martindale as the Giants defensive coordinator. I'm looking forward to going through his film week in and week out to see his exotic pressure packages, to see his man coverage looks, and to see how he adjusts to the New York Giants personnel because it's a lot different than what the Baltimore Ravens had. So I hope you liked this brief video. I'm going to be writing a more in-depth breakdown for Big Blue View. So please head on over to Big Blue View, type it into the Google machine, you will find it. And that breakdown should be there shortly. I'm Nick Filato for Big Blue View. Please head on over there, check it out. And everybody, please also be safe. Take care of yourselves. All right, guys, ladies, be well.